Mild Cognitive Impairment, Wikipedia Article Audio Mild Cognitive Impairment, also known as incipient dementia and isolated memory impairment, is a neurological disorder that occurs in older adults which involves cognitive impairments with minimal impairment in instrumental activities of daily living. MCI involves the onset and evolution of cognitive impairments beyond those expected based on the age and education of the individual, but which are not significant enough to interfere with their daily activities. It may occur as a transitional stage between normal aging and dementia. Causation of the syndrome in and of itself remains unknown, as, therefore, do prevention and treatment. Types Causes Diagnosis Neuropathology Treatment Prevalence Outlook Although MCI can present with a variety of symptoms, when memory loss is the predominant symptom it is termed amnestic MCI and is frequently seen as a prodromal stage of Alzheimer's disease. Studies suggest that these individuals tend to progress to probable Alzheimer's disease at a rate of approximately 10% to 15% per year. When individuals have impairments in domains other than memory it is classified as non-amnestic single or multiple domain MCI and these individuals are believed to be more likely to convert to other dementias. According to some experts, Mild cognitive impairment may be caused due to alteration in the brain triggered during early stages of Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia. However, exact causes of MCI are still unknown. Risk factors of both dementia and MCI are considered to be the same. They are aging, genetic cause of Alzheimer's or other dementia, and risk of cardiovascular disease. The diagnosis of MCI requires considerable clinical judgment, and as such a comprehensive clinical assessment including clinical observation, neuroimaging, blood tests, and neuropsychological testing are best in order to rule out an alternate diagnosis. MCI is diagnosed when there is there is evidence suggesting that although amnestic MCI patients may not meet neuropathologic criteria for Alzheimer's disease, patients may be in a transitional stage of evolving Alzheimer's disease. Patients in this hypothesized transitional stage demonstrated diffuse amyloid in the neocortex and frequent neurofibrillary tangles in the medial temporal lobe. Alternatively, Many individuals develop neurofibrillary tangles without amyloid, a pattern termed primary age-related tauopathy. There is emerging evidence that magnetic resonance imaging can observe deterioration, including progressive loss of gray matter in the brain, from mild cognitive impairment to full-blown Alzheimer disease. A technique known as PIB PET imaging is used to clearly show the sites and shapes of beta amyloid deposits in living subjects using a C11 tracer that binds selectively to such deposits. Such tools may help greatly in assisting clinical research for therapies. As of January 2018, there are no USFDA approved medications for the treatment of mild cognitive impairment. Moreover, as of January 2018, there is no high-quality evidence that supports the efficacy of any pharmaceutical drugs or dietary supplements for improving cognitive symptoms in individuals with mild cognitive impairment. A moderate amount of high-quality evidence supports the efficacy of regular physical exercise for improving cognitive symptoms in individuals with MCI. The clinical trials that established the efficacy of exercise therapy for MCI involved twice-weekly exercise over a period of six months. A small amount of high-quality evidence supports the efficacy of cognitive training for improving some measures of cognitive function in individuals with mild cognitive impairment. 
Due to the heterogeneity among studies which assessed the effect of cognitive training in individuals with MCI, there are no particular cognitive training interventions that have been found to provide greater symptomatic benefits for MCI relative to other forms of cognitive training. The American Academy of Neurology's Clinical Practice Guideline on Mild Cognitive Impairment from January 2018 stated that clinicians should identify modifiable risk factors in individuals with MCI, assess functional impairments, provide treatment for any behavioral or neuropsychiatric symptoms, and monitor the individual's cognitive status over time. It also stated that medications which cause cognitive impairment should be discontinued or avoided if possible. Due to the lack of evidence supporting the efficacy of cholinesterase inhibitors in individuals with MCI, the AAN guideline stated that clinicians who choose to prescribe them for the treatment of MCI must inform patients about the lack of evidence supporting this therapy. The guideline also indicated that clinicians should recommend that individuals with MCI engage in regular physical exercise for cognitive symptomatic benefits. Clinicians may also recommend cognitive training which appears to provide some symptomatic benefit in certain cognitive measures. As MCI may represent a prodromal state to clinical Alzheimer's disease, treatments proposed for Alzheimer's disease, such as antioxidants and cholinesterase inhibitors, could potentially be useful, however, as of January 2018. There is no evidence to support the efficacy of cholinesterase inhibitors for the treatment of mild cognitive impairment. Two drugs used to treat Alzheimer's disease have been assessed for their ability to treat MCI or prevent progression to full Alzheimer's disease. Rivastigmine failed to stop or slow progression to Alzheimer's disease or to improve cognitive function for individuals with mild cognitive impairment. Dunpazil showed only minor, short-term benefits and was associated with significant side effects. In a two-year randomized trial of 168 people with MCI given either high-dose vitamins or placebo, vitamins cut the rate of brain shrinkage by up to half. The vitamins were the three B vitamins folic acid, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12 which inhibit production of the amino acid homocysteine. High blood levels of homocysteine are associated with increased risk of cognitive decline, dementia, and cardiovascular disease. A single study from 2012 showed a possible connection between macronutrient intake and development of MCI. It is also suggested that a dietary pattern with relatively high caloric intake from carbohydrates and low caloric intake from fat and proteins may increase the risk of MCI or dementia in elderly persons. Experimental non-pharmacological treatments for MCI include transcranial magnetic stimulation and transcranial direct current stimulation. The efficacy of these interventions for the treatment of MCI has not yet been established. The prevalence of MCI varies by age. The prevalence of MCI among different age groups is as follows, 6.7% for ages 60-64, 8.4% for ages 65-69, 10.1% for ages 70-74, 14.8% for ages 75-79, and 25.2% for ages 80-84. After a two-year follow-up, the cumulative incidence of dementia among individuals who are over 65 years old and were diagnosed with MCI was found to be 14.9%. Globally. Approximately 16% of the population over the age of 70 experiences some type of mild cognitive impairment. MCI does not usually interfere with daily life, but around 50% of people diagnosed with it go on to develop the far more severe Alzheimer's disease within five years. However, 
some instances of MCI may simply remain stable over time or even remit.